So in previous videos, we had discussed about page layouts, record types, and we have also discussed about the amazing feature list views. So now I think we have learned a little bit about Salesforce. We know how to create objects, fields and all. But what about the security? It's the world's best CRM, right? So there has to be some security settings in Salesforce. So today I'm going to walk you through regarding the security settings of Salesforce, what kind of security model Salesforce has and how secure it is. So let's take a look. So in, if you want to restrict the IP address, if you want to track how many users are logging in from where, so you have the option in Salesforce where you can restrict the IP address. You just have to type in session and go to session settings. These are the options available here where you can restrict the access. So let me walk you through because this is an important session. So you can first decide whether how many hours in how many hours your session should time out. So you can decide the timeout value from here. Then you have the checkbox available for disable session timeout warning pop up and you have the force logout session timeout option available as well. Whether if people are not logging in into Salesforce or if they are logged in, but they're not working, then it will ask them to log out from Salesforce automatically. Then you have the session settings where you will lock sessions to the IP address from which they originated. For example, you have got the company laptop and you are supposed to log in from your company laptop only, but it's work from home. We are asking our brothers and sisters to log in on our behalf, right? So that's how Salesforce is very strict towards this. And if you are trying to log in from someone else's laptop or if someone else is trying to log in on your behalf, we will stop it. Salesforce will not tolerate it and Salesforce will restrict you to log in from any other personal devices. So this is the checkbox which you see here. It will lock the sessions to the IP address from which you have logged in for the very first time. Then you can also check this box where you will lock sessions to the domain in which they first used. Then you have the option force re-login after login as user. That means Whenever you are logging in as another user in Salesforce, we have login access policies. Once that is enabled, you will be able to log in as any user in Salesforce and you can see what they can see, the access and all. So if you check this box free re-login after login as user, it will be asked to log in as system admin again. Then you have require HTTP only attribute. That means whenever you are trying to log into Salesforce, it will require HTTP in the beginning of the URL. If you check this box, use post request for cross domain sessions. That means once you are logged into one domain and if you're trying to log in from another domain, that is a cross domain domain sessions. So if this box is checked, that means it will ask you to stop logging in from different domain. Then you have this checkbox called enforce login IP ranges on every request. That means if you're trying to log in from any other option, it for all Salesforce access request, if you don't select this option, login IP ranges are enforced when users log in. Now you have this section which is called extended use of IE11 with lightning experience. So lightning experience is recently launched in Salesforce earlier. They were using Salesforce classic UI and that is why they have few restrictions for lightning experience because it's a different UI and there are more graphical representations and more features used in lightning UI. So this extended use of IE11 will help you because Salesforce is compatible with limited browsers only. If you're talking about if you're logging in through IE11, then it will stop you from logging in. So you have to make sure that you check all these boxes before you log in through Internet Explorer. So these are some coaching settings which you can use. Enable coaching and auto complete on login page. Enable secure and persistent browser catching to improve performance. Enable user switching. Remember me until logout. Enable content delivery network that is CDN for lightning component framework. So this extended use of Internet Explorer with lightning experience has, has now ended. And as of December 31st, the extended period has ended and use of Internet Explorer 
with lightning experience is no longer supported so issues with performance or functionality that affect only internet explorer will not be fixed so you have to switch to a supported browser now there is identity verification these settings are also located in identity verification so you can choose these settings in either of the location this is let users verify their identity by text or sms whenever we try to log in to any application sometimes we receive text messages on our phones right to approve it whether you are the one who is logging into your gmail or not so this is how salesforce is also designed where you will be asked to send an sms to your mobile phones just to verify your identity because you are logging into salesforce now this is the option where you will prevent the identity verification by email when other methods are registered if you are if your phone is already registered then you are not supposed to verify through email also so that's not required so you have the option to enable or disable this now you require security tokens for api logins from callouts that is the api version 31.0 and earlier it will ask you for security tokens for all the api logins from the callouts now this checkbox is let your users verify their identity with a physical security key so earlier from prior to work from home when we used to go to office there there are ub keys which were supposed to be given to us and we used to log in through the physical security now it has stopped because of the work from home policies but you have the option of enabling that also through salesforce then this checkbox will give you let users authenticate with a certificate you can also let your users authenticate with a certificate you also have the option let users verify their identity with a inbuilt authenticator such as touch id or windows hello we also have this option available where we have now face ids and all in iphones right so you also salesforce also provides you touch id and windows hello feature where you can log into salesforce so you don't have to log into salesforce every time you can just log into windows hello and you will be directed to salesforce automatically then require identity verification during multi factor authentication mfa so mfa registration is uh, something which is going to be mandatory soon in salesforce this is just an fii information right now that multi factor authentication through this you will be able to log into salesforce via mobile application so there is an app called salesforce authenticator which you can download it from google play store or an app store and once you download that application you will be asked to approve salesforce login from that app and once you log in from that app and approve it then only you will be allowed to log into salesforce so that is called multi factor authentication where your device and your laptop or other device will be connected and then you will be able to log in securely then you have require identity verification for email address changes that means whenever you are verifying your identity and whenever you change your email address you can verify that they are who they say they are now require email confirmations for email address changes that applies to users in experience builder sets also so whenever a user is changing their email address they receive an email at the new email address with a link after they click on the link their email address takes effect and users confirms that they own this email address so basically you get a verification link on your email address whenever you change uh, an email on salesforce on your user detail page you will be getting a link on your email on your new email address which you want to appear in salesforce unless you verify the link your email address will not appear in salesforce so this checkbox will help to enable that security then you have let salesforce authenticator automatically verify identifies using geolocation that means it uses the phone's location services to verify the user's identity if users approve the location they aren't prompted for the identity when at that location if the location is not approved or if the users are outside the trusted location they are prompted to verify their identity now there is a sub category let users salesforce authenticator automatically verify identities based on the trusted ip addresses only now this means when users are located with trusted ip address ranges they aren't prompted to verify their identity 
If users are outside the trusted IP address range, they are prompted to verify their identity. Now you have lightning login. That means whenever you are logging in, it always allows you to log into lightning UI or you want your users to with the login lightning login user permission. That means whenever you're logging into Salesforce, you want your users to see lightning UI directly or sometimes if they're comfortable with uh, Salesforce classic UI, they can log into classic UI and switch to lightning back. Then you have clickjack protection as well. You can enable clickjack protection for setup pages and in order to disable this, you have to contact salesforce.com because, because it is enabled by default. This checkbox is enabled clickjack protection for non setup Salesforce pages. You cannot disable this option unless you contact salesforce.com. Now this option is optional if you want to check or uncheck as per your priorities. Enable clickjack protection for customer visual force pages with standard headers, which protect against clickjack attacks and allow framing on trusted external domains. This is the checkbox which will help you to enable clickjack for protection for customer visual force pages with headers disabled. That means it will do the same thing, protect against clickjack attacks and it will allow framing on trusted external domains and standard headers are disabled when the show header attribute is set to false. This is some information about trusted domains for inline frames like visual force pages. It allow in frames visual force pages with clickjack protection on external domains. To enable this feature, you have to add external domains when you're allowing framing and then turn on one of the enable clickjack protection for customer visual force pages preferences under clickjack protection. This enabling this feature is optional and it doesn't change existing clickjack protection. So for surveys, allow in frames to surveys on external domains to enable this feature, add external domains when you're allowing framing. So what these features usually do is for example, you are into service-based industry and you're using Salesforce for your customers, where customers are raising cases with you and you are solving their problems, issues through the case management. Now you are sending them surveys that how was the service. So you have to connect your Salesforce to an external domain where customers will fill the surveys and those surveys will be stored in Salesforce. So in order to enable that kind of connection, you will have to do this and add enable domain. Now, this is something cross site request for Gacy, CSRF protection. That means if you enable this CSRF protection on GET request on non setup pages, you will be allowed to use Salesforce on non setup pages also. But this feature is also enabled by default and you cannot disable it. In order to disable it, you have to contact salesforce.com. Then you have content security policy protection. So this checkbox means override restriction on accessing email templates in Salesforce using Internet Explorer. As you know that Internet Explorer is no more compatible with Salesforce Lightning. So that is why if you still want to customize your email templates on Salesforce Lightning in Internet Explorer, then you have to check this box. Then this is enabling stricter content policy security. That means the Lightning Component Framework already uses CSP, which is a W3C standard. And to control the source of content that can be loaded on a page, this setting enables stricter content security policy, that is CSP, which prohibits the use of unsafe inline to mitigate the risk of cross-site scripting attacks. Now, this is Lightning Locker API version, which you can choose as per your requirement. It usually enhances the security with each API update. And to increase your org security, Salesforce recommends you to update your custom components to comply with the latest locker enhancements. If you're unable to update your components right away, you can temporarily select an earlier compatible API version. And this API setting only applies to the locker feature in your org. So this is set to the maximum by default because it's the safest option and secured option to use. Now you have Lightning Web Security, where you can use Lightning Web Security for Lightning Web Components. That means that it enables the new security architecture instead of Lightning Locker to protect Lightning Web Components. 
Now you have access as protection where you can enable this. You can also enable content sniffing protection and also you can hide the site's URL from other websites including Visual Force page for example. If other websites are using Salesforce, let's like say communities, if communities are using your Salesforce website and if you don't want them to access your Salesforce, you can use this option and hide the site's URL. Now you have redirections where you can warn users before they are redirected outside of Salesforce. If they are trying to export something, export the data out of Salesforce, if they are trying to do something, then this will warn the users. Now this is the session security levels which you can decide what kind of session security logins you want. You have all the options here. You have multi-factor authentication which is the latest security method of Salesforce. You have username password which was the old version of security. You have delegated authentication, activation, lightning login and passwordless login as well. Where it will not ask you for password, it will directly ask you for a username and you will be allowed to login directly. But it's recommended to use multi-factor authentication for a security. Then you have the option where you can decide the logout URL as well. And uh, if you want to redirect your users to a specific page after they are logged out of Salesforce by entering a URL, you can do that from here. And the last option is link expires in. So whatever links are sent the, to the users, you have the option whether you want them to expire in one day, seven days or 180 days. So this will specify how long the account verification link in welcome emails is valid. So this is about the security settings which we have just discussed and it was a very intense topic. It is very difficult to learn but it has to be in this format so that you can follow the security of Salesforce properly. So stay tuned for the next coming videos.